In a previous video, I explained how you could use equation ordering in order to make a set of equations solvable one at a time. So we've been working on this uh, gas simulation where we have a pressure vessel, a feed and an exit stream. In the previous video, which I'll link uh, to the notes in this video, we started out by having a model description that we just wrote down from first principles and we ordered the equations in such a way so that we had a bottom triangular incidence matrix which means that these unknowns on the right hand side will be able to be solved one at a time by simply uh, writing these equations down in the order that they are appear here so i'm going to switch over to uh, my, my jupyter notebook and I've already copied and pasted the various parameters from the uh, from table one. So if we if we look at uh, table one over here, these are the given values, uh, and these are all of these initial values up to there. So um, we know that we also have to specify a value for uh, m and p u, um, and then equation six can be used to calculate p. So let's uh, start off by specifying a value for m, let's say something like 30, um, as well as pu. Upper pressure, we could say something like 250. That was in the problem statement, uh, in the original problem statement. And now we are ready to start uh, typing the equations. Um, like they say in cooking shows, I've, I've got some that I prepared earlier. So, um, we can simply insert these equations here. So these are the first couple of equations. So this is P, F, I, Rho, and Reynolds. And so with uh, this definition, we can we can see that we've been able to successfully solve up to this point. Now we reach an interesting point. We need to use this equation According to our incidence matrix, we need to use that equation to solve for f prime. But try as we might, we cannot rearrange this equation in a closed form solution for f prime. I'm going to skip that for um, for two seconds and just assume that we have a special function that will allow us um, to calculate f prime uh, so that the code will run. I'm simply going to put in a value there. And I will continue with the rest of the equations. So now we've been able to get all of these lines. Now I want you to notice a couple of things. The first thing is that I haven't jumped immediately into writing a full function for the differential equation, which is where we're heading. We our final goal is to simulate the system as the upstream pressure changes. Now, um, so here we have here we have the system. We're going to say let's start the system at steady state and then put a little um, jump into PU and see what happens. But notice how I'm going about the programming task. I'm I'm starting out with the easy stuff, and I'm making sure that that works correctly. So. Here, this I've been able to verify that the equation ordering um, works correctly. So, if I had got if I had uh, gotten something wrong, I'm just going to um, restart the kernel so that it doesn't remember any of these values. So, let's say I I had made a mistake in my ordering. I had mistakenly put F O uh, that F O equation at the beginning. Now, if I define all my variables. I will obtain a name error complaining that this thing that I need to calculate if O if prime um, is not defined. So at this point already I would have realized my error and realized that I would have to change the ordering again. Now um, we took pains in the previous video to actually do the equation ordering correctly. So we know that we expect each of these equations to be solvable. Right. Now to this little piece that we left out before, so this idea that we'll calculate the um, f prime later. Um, luckily, 
in a previous tutorial we have already written a nice little function that will calculate uh, um, will calculate f prime from the Colbrook equation. I'm simply going to paste that uh, function here. This was from a previous tutorial. If you're interested, that is using the um, that is using a fixed point iteration. Right, so our Colbrook function takes a value of epsilon, d, and Reynolds, and returns a f prime value. So we can simply type that over here. Of course, we need to import NumPy. And now we are able to see all the different values. So I can go and check what the value of f prime was. I can see what the value of the derivative was and so on. So effectively, we've now been able to solve these equations for a particular value of the surrounding variable. So in other words, for a particular m, for a particular uh, upstream pressure. So rather than typing or um, retyping these equations every time we need to use them, it's very useful for us to uh, wrap that into a function. So I'm just going to call this pressure system. And notice what I'm doing here in the in the uh, this environment. I'm simply um, wrapping these equations in the function and be, in order for that equation to have a meaningful result, I have to return uh, the value. So before I could just execute those cells, now I can actually call the function and I can call this function with the same arguments. Remember before we had m equals 30, p u equals 250, so let's say uh, 250, 30. And we see the same result. So we say before we had calculated the MDT explicitly and, and uh, just printed that result, now we're calculating it inside the function. I want you to realize that the operations are exactly the same. So this code is still executing from top to bottom, going and then calculating the derivative. If we are trying to calculate a steady state, um, we might want to find out what the mass is uh, for a given upstream pressure at steady state. Now we know that the system at uh, with a 30 uh, kilograms of mass is not at steady state because the derivative is not zero. So we would like to uh, set the derivative to be equal to zero and we will use fsol for that. So um, so we can we can import the scipy.optimize library and then we can use fsol but if we have a look at the, the help for fsol we see that if solve expects a function which is just a function of the thing that we're trying to solve for. So we're trying to solve for m, but there's this extra pu in this pressure system. I parameterized it that way because these are the inputs um, into the pressure system. So um, what do we do? We can define another function, which is only a function of m. And all that that thing does is to return the value of the pressure system function for a particular PU and M. And we can make use of a global variable to calculate that. So there we have our steady state and we can say So now we're calling that same function, still calling pressure first system with uh, upstream pressure of 250. With the m that we supply, we see that we obtain the same derivative. Now it's time for our f solve. So we can solve these steady state equations starting at a value of 30 
and we see that um, the, for this example the answer is 31 so that would be our steady state pressure so that's where our pressure would be starting out or our mass would be starting out we can now simulate the system and when we want to simulate the system we can use uh, scipy.integrate so scipy.integrate uh, supplies a function called odint and this is how odint works it accepts a function and a starting point and a set of times over which it must integrate and it then integrates this function so this function must be of a, of a special type it must be a function which returns the derivative of the thing that is the first argument so again we can define a function of that correct kind by um, taking something like our, let's say dmdt let's say we have our dmdt function it wants to be a function of m and time right so this is what the the, the help tells us we need some kind of function which is going to return the derivative of the thing that is the first argument um, given a particular time okay um, now we're keeping this example simple so we're working with scalars and we simply will return our pressure system right um, with the upstream pressure and m okay so this will this will calculate the correct value now notice that there's no um, we're not actually using this t uh, but that's perfectly fine it doesn't tell us that we have to use it it just says that this function will accept a second argument od int wants a function that accepts at least two arguments so let's test whether that uh, function works we can calculate the mdt for what we said our steady state was right and we can use any time here so we, but let's say uh, let's say time zero and we see as expected that the derivative is very small so if we start at uh, upstream pressure of 250 uh, we will see that we are uh, we won't go anywhere so let's 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 try that out so um, sci-fi dot integrate dot odint now we're going to pass it this function dmdt and we need to uh, tell it which values of time to use so let's um, imagine that uh, perhaps we simulate 100 seconds so um, let's say that uh, we're going to create a numpy array which goes from 0 to 100 and those will be the t's that we pass down to ODE int and the result will be an integ integrated value of the mass ah, yes of course we need to pass it the initial value there okay so now we have an integrated m and i'm going to use um, the pyplot library and the notebook interface to matplotlib to to plot this get rid of the help so let's plot this and there we see what we expected that uh, notice that this range here is all basically the same so we started at um, steady state and we're just staying um, at that steady state so let's um, let's run that simulation slightly differently and um, actually change the upstream pressure so we've calculated our steady state value for a pressure of 250 at the upstream let's take that pressure up to uh, 300 and see how that integration works out so let's do our upstream pressure is now 300 we integrate again and we expect yes there we go the pressure goes up but we see that this is happening a lot faster than 100 seconds so maybe we just want to look at the first 10 seconds so let's do that again uh, 
And there we go, we have a nice integrated uh, pressure. Now, I haven't made this figure very beautiful, I haven't uh, done a lot of commenting, but I'm hoping that you see the process. Um, the key points I want you to remember is the process that I went through, um, not writing this code all at once, but incrementally testing, making sure that everything works before I move on to the next step.